Okay. All right. So we have about 25 participants and they're from all different backgrounds. I can tell there's some crew chiefs, there's newer officials, there's more veteran officials. Um, this is going to be creating cutups 101. Um, so anyone can use it if they want to do cutups or um, uh, Ron Cox was the original person who asked for this tonight because he's volunteered for his crew to do cutups and he wanted to ask me if there are any tips. And I said, yeah, I, I've, I'll show you the latest method I use to do it. And I'll show you some other methods that will work for you as well. But this is designed for creating playlists for your crew. I can answer questions that have to do with Huddle itself, um, but you're going to need to um, uh, put it in the chat room. And uh, Ron, if you could help me, uh, Ron Cox, yep. and just monitor the chat room a little bit for me. Okay. I'll be happy to do that. Okay. So the first thing is you all log in to Huddle, and Huddle presents to me uh, this San Fernando Valley up here in the left-hand corner. And that's where I'm a teammate of their unit up in San Fernando Valley. And as you can see, I'm a member of a lot of different things over here. Um, over the years, I've added these things. So uh, the big um, five for San Diego are right here, City Conference through North County Conference. And we'll work in North County Conference today. Okay, so when I um, sometimes when somebody's not finding something that has been shared either from another official or from me, I always take them back to this home page up here in the upper left hand corner. And I say, if you can't find, so I just did it this week with uh, a second year official who's transferred and come back and he couldn't find any video that I had shared. So I said, go up here in the upper left-hand corner next to the huddle emblem and click on home. And what will happen is you get this main home page, which is full of advertisements and people's best um, uh, plays and playlists or whatever. But also in there will be like what I did today, which is I sent everybody a playlist of 10 plays, I think, and announced that huddle is fixed. Thank God it is. And that's usually where you can find anything that someone has shared with you directly. So that's just a little tip of where to find stuff. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna go to, um, uh, so I think um, Ron, when, when I share a film on Saturday, usually Saturday morning by noon, um, I think it shows up in this, this thing that says, Coover has sent you video or somebody has shared video with you. Right. right? Okay, so that's your clue. You've got some video, and you can. Do you usually click on it right here, Ron? Uh, I usually. I don't even have to go to here. The link when they send it to me, there's usually a link, and I'll send you right to it. Okay, so if you click on that link, and it doesn't send you right to it, go back to the link and click on it a second time, and it will take you there. That's a little trick that can solve some problems. And again, you can also go to this home page and scroll down till it says Coover instructional video or Coover has shared video with you from your game film. So what you want to do then is once you've accepted, it's going to take you to, like I said, let's say your game was in the North County. So wherever your game is, I'm going to mute Nathan French here. There we go. Um, so wherever your game was, city conference, uh, metro conference, wherever it was, that's where your film is going to go, and it's going to be located there. So I'm pretending that my game, our game, was in the North County Conference, and the, the question was asked, is there a difference between Huddle Classic and the new Huddle? And yes, there is. The new Huddle is what's presented here in front of me uh, on my screen that you're looking at. And um, I, I don't look at it or work in that at all. I only work in Huddle Classic. So if there's anyone that wants to know about new Huddle, they're gonna have to ask somebody other than Steve Coover. Um, so I'm gonna click on Huddle Classic and I'm gonna go to the library. So here's my library and these are all the cutups that I've done already this year. 
And I've been pulling them from this Alex uh, Spanos All-Star game that's listed here. So we have the 24-25 season and I'm working in the preseason area. So the film that comes to you depends on what week you had the game, right? So I'm going to go back to last year. And uh, so let me let me show you. You can just close the whole year. 24-25, I just closed it. So now I have the 23-24 season last year. And I have preseason scrimmages, week one. There's film inside all of these if I open them up. Here's week three. Open it up. There's a bunch of film. And so here's week eight. And um, I'm just going to grab... Um, Let's see, one that's not somebody's cut up. So let's do LCC versus El Camino, no, MCHS, Mount Carmel High School versus San Marcos High School press box. So I'm going to click on that. Okay. Now, the, what I'm looking at right away is down below here are the numbered plays. And what I'm looking for is on this left-hand side, any squiggle marks over here between the number and the circle. There would be, if there were squiggle marks in here, I would know there were cut-ups here, that there was, somebody had written in. Anytime you write into the, um, you put a circle, let's, let's go to play number three. And I put a circle out there. Right away, there's a squiggle that shows up on play number three. See it right there? That indicates that somebody has done something on play number three that's either a, a note or an arrow or a circle. They've done something. Um, if I get rid of it, circle's gone, and so is a little squiggle mark. That's pretty important because it's going to show me a really cool sh uh, shortcut to creating cut-ups. So I was just looking at this playlist because I've never looked at it before, Mount Carmel and uh, uh, San Marcos. And I don't see any playlists right here. Th this The first batch of um, numbered plays goes from 1 to 100. That's what it says right here. And if you want to look at 101 to 144, you have to click this arrow over. And here comes uh, plays 101 to 144. So it won't list all plays um, 1 to 144, you have to click back and forth depending on whether you want 1 to 100 or 101 to 144, okay? Now, you can expand this window down below by going over here to these two arrows and holding your uh, mouse down and dra dragging it up. And what it does, it creates a bigger window. That's as big as I can make it. But I've got 15 plays I can look at in a row here. So now I've got a bigger window to work in. My For my preference, I like a bigger window to view the plays. So I, I go ahead and bring it back down and have a bigger visual window here. Okay, now the critical thing for creating cutups is the file report itself. So that's where um, Ron, I think you remember last year, Kevin uh, Fuller was our back judge and he kept a file report. Yep. And I would make it real important to talk to Kevin and say, Kevin, it's real important that I get, and this is in the preseason, before we had our very first game. I said, Kevin, it's really important that that me, Steve Coover, I get the foul report as soon as I can by Saturday morning. Because when I get up Saturday morning, once I start drinking coffee, I am pounding film out to the crews. And I'm sending it out to each of the crews. They're all built. By the way, Finney, your crew, I did rebuild it in um, uh, Huddle. So your crew is ready to go. And Anthony, please do switch classrooms over to your new crew. Okay? I'll catch up with you. I'm going to get you on the roster. But just sign in, and then I'll get you transferred over on Wednesday. Um, so your crews are in there. Uh, and so all I do is I go to uh, share a film once it's been shared with me from the school. Um, I, I can show you how to do that, but you'll never do it. So I'm not going to, it's not worth your time. But I share it out to each of the crews. Once the crew gets it, it's in your library. You open it up. Uh, Kevin Fuller was so good last year with the foul report that by the time I got home on Friday night after dinner, 
he would have taken a picture of the foul report and sent it to my phone. So I was ready to go the next morning. I would print it out on my computer from my phone. I would send it to my computer and print it out. And then I had my full foul report. Now the foul reports, as you guys all know, will give you um, the time that the foul was called, uh, what the foul is, which team it was on, whether it's accepted or declined maybe, um, and which official called it, uh, something like that, that, that basic information. All right, what it doesn't tell you is what huddle play it is. And that's kind of tricky because I don't want to spend time going through every single play of the game looking for fouls. I may want to go through every single play of the game looking for mechanics or looking at something I did or, you know, whatever, but I, um, I or interesting plays, but I'm not going to do it for the foul report. I want, I want to be able to find a foul. So let's say there was a foul that occurred at, um, uh, let's see, we have what? 12 minute quarters, right? Let me refresh my memory here. So we have 12 minute quarters in a varsity game and it happened at about six minutes. So at six minutes, we had our first foul and it was a false start. So I, I use just basic math to find the number. So if it's a 12 um, minute game, <clears throat> 12 minute quarters, and there's four quarters, um, and we have down in this total down here, 144 plays, halftime should be about 72. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Divide 144 by two. So right around play 72 should be halftime. And we can try that out. Let's go see. I have no idea. So I go to play 72. And somebody's got the ball here. Um, I go forward. I'm at 74. Sometimes they give you scoreboards. Sometimes they'll put the time down in the bottom left-hand corner. And um, that can be really, really helpful. So I'm now at play 82. And it looks like we might be in the th third quarter. I've got the teams going. Um, so I'm going to go back to 72 and go back the other direction to 71. Okay. Well, there's a touchdown. So that wasn't halftime. And sometimes they give you ODP data. And with ODP data, which is this data that goes, oh, I forget where it goes. It gives you offense, defense, or special teams. Um, so I'm looking back at 65. And then they scored. So I I'm not really finding I'm not really finding the uh oh, it was a fumble and a touchdown. Okay, I'm not really finding the halftime this way, but normally if you just do the math, 70 is gonna be about uh halftime, 72, and then a half of 70 is 35, and that's gonna be about the quarter. Um let me find another game. As to El Camino and La Costa Canyon. Oh, this is intercut. So you're going to have sideline and uh, that's not going to be so good. Okay, here's. Okay, there's 170. Now that there's no ODK uh, offense defense information on this hill, on this one. And Mission Hills doesn't give me ODK either. Maybe I don't have it turned off. Eclipse, audio, annotations. Huh. Oh, well. But ODP will give you, um, uh, you know, offense, defense, and kicks. And when you see a kick followed by a kick, that's going to be a PAT followed by a free kick. And then if you just see a, a K by itself, that's usually going to be a punt. And if you, um, or it could be halftime, it'd be the end of the end of the first half. And then here's the kickoff free kick. So a K by itself can indicate halftime or a punt. 
And so you can find halftime pretty quickly there. All right. So let's stay with um, Mission Hills and uh, Torrey Pines here. And let's say now I have found the first uh, penalty at uh, play number seven. So what I like to do is go out of this um, screen where I have the ribbons at the bottom and I go to a full screen where the, I'm gonna actually write my comment. And so in this screen, I'm gonna write Ron, because I know Ron Cox, he's on my crew, holding. And that's all I'm gonna put. I'm just gonna put that because um, I found that the more I write in here for the crew, um, I, the less bang for the buck. I, I don't think, I think it stops conversation and um, who do we really want to hear from when Ron has called holding? We want to hear from Ron. They want to hear from Coover about Ron's holding. So um, you know, Ron can attest to this because we were on a crew together last year, that that's all I would put up there. And then yeah. midweek when we would meet, we'd say, oh, okay, here's Ron's holding. And then Ron would talk about what he saw, what he was looking at, da, 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 da. and then people would chime in. But that's sort of the best way, I think, to use cut-ups as a crew to keep the conversation inclusive and everybody participating and adding to the conversation. Um, so if I'm doing the cut-ups, I'm going to keep my comments to the minimum, minimum. Now, if I'm the crew chief and I see something that I really want to teach, that's different. Um, I, let's say I'm the crew chief and I say Ron Holding, and then I might say something like um, Coover um, uh, Goal Line Mechanics. So Ron's going to talk about the penalty at, at Holding, and then I'm going to maybe talk to, to Steve Coover about his Goal Line Mechanics, something to that effect. Okay. All right. So I've once I've done this box to title the play and I now click back out of it over here on play number seven, there's that squiggle I was telling you about, right? So this is the beauty of it. So now I'm going to find the next penalty. So I go forward, go forward, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then sure enough, we have another false start down at the goal line. So now I'm going to go back to um full screen the reason i go to full screen is when i put this box in there which is right here i put the box in then it goes in the place where i want it if i have the screen down like this i can't that box may not be exactly where it says it is in this in this um location so when i do it open it up to a full screen i know that this box is going to be up here by the track and what I'm going to do is write in, um, um, I'm going to say um, house, ball start, ball start, boom, done. So I've got that penalty. All right. So now I'm going to, again, I'll go into some of the details of editing in a minute. But what I'm showing you right now is the basic way in which I create a cut up. I keep going through this film until I've identified all of the fouls from Kevin Fuller's foul report, from our crew's foul report. I just keep labeling each time I find the foul, play 20, there it is. This is uh, uh, Anthony Finney's crappy holding call. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click the box down here at the bottom. The box comes up. If I want to move the box, I go over here on the black thing and move it over. If I don't like the box, I can just go over here and get rid of the box with the red. But I wanted the box. So I'm going to click on the box again. And I'm going to put Finney, Crappy, Holding. No, I'm not. I'm just going to put Holding. Remember, we want Finney to say, I'm not so sure I like that foul. That's who we want to say that. We don't want Steve Cooper, who's doing cut-ups, to say that. So we just put Finney holding, and then in the course of conversation, Finney might say, you know what? I think we could live without that, that call. 
and we go, you know what? We see it's a gray area. We see the indicator and all that, but you know what? We agree. I think, I think you're right, Anthony. So we, we move and grow together with confidence and, and, and um, respect for one another and learn to trust one another. Okay. So I've identified three plays. Let's say I've identified, uh, it's usually about 20 altogether, maybe some specials. Um, you know, 14 fouls, and then about six plays where somebody said, hey, uh, we got booed by both both stands. I think <laughs> I think we need to take a look at that play. Steve, or, we have, I'm sorry, we did have a question. Can you put a check mark in the circle for your cut up? Okay. I haven't gotten there yet. So okay. that's a great question. The reason I don't do anything but mark them as I go all the way through the foul report is that when I'm done, I am going to identify and label the cut up page one time. One time. So now I'm all done saying Finney holding, false start, Coover, whatever, all these different things. Now I'm going to go over, I'm going to have to move this window because I need to get it something back here. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to go over here and I am going to fill in the circle next to play number seven because I can tell from the squiggle that I wrote something there. I'm going to go to play number 11 because there's another squiggle. And then I'm going to go to play number 20 because there's another squiggle there. I find every play that has a squiggle. And by the way, you can click on this arrow and go all the way through to the final 140, 34. So you don't have to stop one single time. You can click back and forth between 1 and 100 and 101, 134. Click on every one that you identified that you want to go into your playlist. Click on the little bubble, make the bubble turn blue. Then you go over here where it says Save Playlist. Click Save Playlist. And now it's going to ask you to name the playlist. And I'm going to call this De Los Reyes. Okay. Really? So where do I want it to go? Do I want it to go in 23, 24, 24, 25? Uh, let's say I want to, I'm going to move it. I'm going to go to 24, 25. I'm going to go to the preseason and game footage. So I'm actually going to move it. Normally you're going to put it right back into the week where it came from and it'll, it'll tell you that. So, um, no, I'm going to change my mind because I want to see the same video up there. And I want to go to, uh, what week was I in? Eight, I think. Okay. So we're going to week eight. And it's going to be game footage. And I'm going to save the playlist. So now at the bottom of the playlist for week number eight. Yep, week number eight. It doesn't go in alphabetical order yet. So it's down at the bottom. Once I log out and come back in, De Los Reyes is going to be all the way back up here after the C's, between the C's and the E's. Because hey, so if you, if you named it, uh, this is a short abbreviation of whoever the first team was in the list, and then cut up. So SMHS, V, Mount Carmel, and thing, it would go in right below that then, right? Well, here's stars cut ups right here. Right, okay. Okay. And then house is cut up to right here. So I, I would do it by the name of the crew. Okay. Yeah, that makes no sense. Uh-huh. So when I click on De, De Los Reyes now, there are my three plays. Right? Ron, Ron holding Coover goal line mechanics. So that's the fastest way to do the cut ups. Just keep going through your foul report, finding the fouls, writing what the foul is up in a little box, move on to your next foul, create a box, write what the foul is in the box, find your next foul, create a box, put, put the identification. Every time you do that, a little squiggle is going to show up in that big old list, and then you put... Uh, Put a uh, you darken the circle next to every one of those that has a squiggle, and then select save playlist from right here, and name your playlist, and it'll go right in there for you. That's the easiest way to do it. 
Now, somebody said, well, wait a minute. Can't you just, let me go back to uh, Torrey Pines, Mission Hills. Here's the master game, okay? And again, um, mm -mm. I think it was Mission Hills, yeah, Torrey Pines. Hills. Other way, there it is. Okay, the reason I know is there's squiggles over here, right? There weren't squiggles on the Torrey Pines versus Mission Hills. This is Mission Hills versus Torrey Pines. Your crew has to know which film you're working in. Don't work in both films unless you're looking for an angle. Sometimes I have a, a, a difficult play to see, like a holding or a dead ball foul, and you're looking at Mission Hills versus Torrey Pines, and you can't really see it well. So maybe I should try Torrey Pines versus Mission Hills, the other team's film, and maybe I can see it there. So that's a little trick for creating a cut up. And by the way, let's say I wanted to do that. Let's say now I'm looking at play 11. It was down by the goal line, I think. Yeah, play 11. I was looking at that and it was really too far away. I want to see if I could get a better look at it. So I'm going to go to play 11 in the other team's film, not Mission Hills, but Torrey Pines. And I go to play 11. And there it is. Sometimes they use the exact same photographer and you get no difference between the two teams. They have one team filming and they get both. Uh, Sometimes there's a slight difference. So let's say that I liked this. I want this to go along with play 11 on the Eddie De Los Reyes cutups already created. All I have to do, and this is what somebody was asking in the question, Rather than having to go up and do and identify what the play is, I can just go over here and click on the circle, make it blue, hold it down and drag it, and one play is going to come over here and go into the De Los Reyes cutups. Wow. And I drop nice. it. And I drop it. So now when I go to Eddie De Los Reyes cutups, I see. I've got play seven, plays 11, and plays 20, but now I've also dropped a new play 11, okay? Now, I don't want this play here. I want this play up by the other play 11. So what I do is I highlight it. Once I highlight it, I bring my cursor up, a little green ribbon says, move clip here. So now I'm gonna go up here between the 11 and the 20, the green gets darker when it really likes it where it is. It really likes it's right there between the 11 and 20. And I click on it and the 11 moves up to the 20. Well, okay. Nice. So all you have to do is highlight and then move your uh, cursor up and down and you can reorder. Another way to do it is you can click on play number up here and that'll reorder in numerical order. So sometimes I've I've opened uh, teams um, plays their their game film and the numbers are all out of order. It's play one, play twenty six, play forty two, play one hundred twenty, play three. It's all out of order. All you have to do is go back up here and click on that, and it'll order it. If I click on it again, I think it's going to reverse the order. Yeah. So now it goes twenty to seven. So this this is kind of a cool deal. It, it, organizers or you could just move them okay so what i want was like that 7 11 11 and 20. so the other way to create cutups would be to go into let me go back up to san marcos mount carmel <clears throat> i'm so, yeah san marcos mark carmel and oh i was on the other one mount carmel san marcos that's where i was all right so so if i just wanted to do it this the the longer way all you have to do is when you identify a play that you want to be in the playlist you just highlight it right here the very first one you don't have to do any writing up here. Now, I like the writing because then I remember why did I put that play in the playlist? If I just put it over in the playlist, I come back and look at it and I go, 
oh, I can't remember what this play is. So that's why I encourage you to do it the shortcut way that I learned. But you can do it this way and you can actually write it up there. And then what you can do is go over if, for just one play, save playlist, one play. And this one, we're going to call it um, uh, Ron uh, Playlist. Steve, there is a question when you're right there. Can okay. I say, jump in on this? Hold on. Yep. So now I've created a uh, Ron playlist. So I go back to San Marcos, Mount Carmel, Mount Carmel, San Marcos, that one. And so now I found another play that I liked here, play number 19. I don't have to do anything. I can just highlight play 19. I can just hold the cursor down over the blue ribbon, drag it over. Oops. Where did, where did Ron go? I'm going to put this back. Uh, there's Ron, Ron's playlist. So now I'm going to drag it over and put it in Ron's playlist. Bam. So now when I look in Ron's playlist, he's got two plays. And we can build it one play at a time. That's how I used to do it. One play at a time. Just find it, put it in. Find it, put it in. Find it, put it in. First play, make, name the playlist. And then every play after that, just drag it over and drop it. Drag it, drop it. Drag it, drop it. One at a time. But then I learned when I came back on a crew, I decided, hey, wait a minute. I'm finding 20 of these in a row. Why don't I just keep finding them, identifying them by adding a box, typing in what the play is so I can remember what it is, and then move on to the next foul. And when I was doing that, I found that at the end, when I just went in and um, went to all of the squiggle marks that I could find, saved it one time, I had my playlist done all at once. Question. Yes, the question was, uh, once you've put in uh, comments and, and uh, you know, arrows and so forth on there, and the playlist is in there, can uh, people other than the people on our crew see it? So can the, can the team see those then? Or are these films they've sent to us and they and no, no longer can see them? Well, that's a really good question. And I'm not sure of the answer. Steve, I've got the answer. The answer is yes, they can see them. And that's why I tell my crew, the first thing you do is you go into manage library, create a copy of the play of the game film and rename it. That way you're editing your own crew's film instead of the master film. Because Ron, exactly what you're saying is going to happen. You know, we're going to say, hey, we missed a foul on this or, you know, we missed a holding, watch the tight end here. Then if the the coach of that team happens to go into huddle and see our comments, you know, they'll basically see what what our input is. And that's a way you can keep our input um, proprietary instead of out there for everybody to see. So we should just come up with a crew protocol for how we're labeling the naming them. That's not really obvious to the co to the teams then. Right. So like okay. Steve said, he recommended using the crew chief's name. Um, just go into manage. Hold on. But Robert, before you start teaching everybody manage software, I'd like to put the brakes, pump the brakes okay. a little bit. Because then I'm going to have 400 people in manage in the management section. Okay. Do we really want 400 people screwing around in there? No, but you want the person that's editing the clips for your crew to be able to make um, comments that are not seen globally. So the question. I have, because I'm not sure that's true, Robert. I have never heard from a coach one time in the how many years we've been doing this that we're screwing up their video with our comments. Not not one coach. So is are they log are they logging into North County Conference SDCSFOA? No. Right, because they've got their own account. Right. 
where I think we run into problems and I didn't know the answer is if it's your film, Robert, and you put cut ups in and share it within San Diego County Football Officials Association to me, I can't, I don't think I can get rid of your comments. Because correct, because we're in the same conference, same file. I don't believe anyone outside of San Diego County football officials can see the cutups. Otherwise, these teams share film all year long. That means that all their scouting that they've done on a film that gets shared would get seen by the other team because they share their game film they put it up there so i don't think what you said is true at least that part the teams are seeing our cut-ups so i really don't think we need to go in and make copies i think we can take our copy of it and go from there because i've never had i don't know let's see ron what I can't remember if anyone added any comments to our film last oh, only year. only Robin did. None of the rest of us wrote in there. But Robin could do it, right? Right, yeah. Yeah. So if you go back to last year's cuts, you'll see it in your library right now, if you pop open last year, you'll see Robin's comments. I, I, Steve, you know, I say that, but it could have been things that he discussed with you and you wrote them in. This is me. I wrote that. Yeah, because I, I, and. Uh, I wrote that. Yeah, I'm just thinking, that, you know, that uh, I may have been thinking that he had said it, but you probably are the one who actually put it into the film. Yeah, I can't remember. And that's where I, I'm not sure what Robert's the issue that Robert's bringing up may be valid within our group within our crew. So I think the problem is if I write like I did here signaling on a turnover and that was a reminder to the crew to signal on a turnover um Ron you couldn't go in and get rid of this comment I don't think I don't think I, you can I agree and the question is, can you add to it? And Robert, I don't know if you have the answer to that. Do you? Um, yeah. So we we've done this over the course of a couple of years. You can always add. So it's a it's a cumulative process. Right. So when you get you know two and three and four people editing the cutups, you get an aggregate comment list from everybody who's seen it. Correct. So what's the need for making a copy? that you've got one unaltered version that's exactly the way we got it from the teams. Well, you have that anyway. Until you make the first comment. Yeah, but it's within our crew, right? I don't think it's within, it's within the crew. Our I think it's within the whole association. Say that again, Jerry. Yeah, I don't... I, I think Robert's, I could be wrong, but I think Robert's right. When you make a comment on your master master game within our association and then move it to a playlist, yeah, you're going to have all the comments on the playlist, but those comments show up on the master game also within our association, but not with the team. I think that's correct. And I don't see any problem with that whatsoever. Okay, yeah, and that is yeah. what I was saying. Yep, and then everybody in the association can see it on that game film. But yes, I don't. But I don't think we care, right? Nobody cares. Yeah, because that that's that's cumulative learning then, and discussion yeah. points for other crews. And I'm not trying to keep everybody out of the of management function, but it is dangerous because that's where we lose games. They actually disappear. <laughs> they, yeah, that, that I was can, the purpose of the. Oops, sorry, Steve. Go ahead. Yeah, that was the purpose of the question is if whenever we were making comments in the original, you know, video and you went back after you made the cut ups, the comments were still there. Obviously, as an association, we can see them. That's fine. But I didn't want to make sure that that 
like kind of what uh, Robert was saying about it's the master copy. I didn't want the teams to be able to go in there and see that we were, you know, critiquing each other. I just wanted to make sure it was only for the association. Exactly. I'm not, I, no, we're good. The only thing is that whatever comment is put on there is going to stick because we're now writing on the master as, as Robert said. So when I wrote signaling on a turnover here, that's going to stick unless I, Steve Coover, get rid of it because I'm the one that wrote it on there. Okay? So, so then I'm sorry if I'm beating this horse to death here, but mm -hmm. if I'm if I went through and dotted all my foul plays mm -hmm. and and made my week through foul report cut up and then went in and wrote on just that cut up one, then it's not on the original. It's just all my comments are just on the cut up one, right? It's all the same. Oh, okay. okay. In the original are it just, the it exact just same. Back same master it's always the master okay so, so when i'm writing this on if i were to write remember i did that said that before that i would take the cut up the play without writing anything i would take the play highlight the bubble and drag it over and drop it onto the playlist right so when i open the playlist now i want to write on the play on the cut ups so i would write signaling on a turnover well, that signaling on a turnover is going to show up on the master. All right, so it's just a resort. It's not a copy. And it's not a copy of the. No, of, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. And that's Thank you. And that's why I'm. I went through all of this with Robert to make sure that because I've had people forward information to me from, let's say, it's the uh, your own cut up list. So I get a cut up from Bezerkov's crew. He sends me a play. Hey, here's an interesting play. You might want to use it for calibration. Okay. Now I have to do exactly what Robert says. I have to go into the management portion. And for everybody that's on here, I'm going to go ahead and show you. And trust you, you're not going to do it. But you go up here under Huddle Classic, under Library, you go under Manage Library. When you go into Manage Library, there's all kinds of stuff that can happen here. Downloads and all kinds of weird stuff. But if I go to week eight, I can actually go to, here's De Los Reyes. See, it's already in, in, in the master file. And what I would do is if I wanted to um, use what Eddie De Los Reyes sent to me to use for uh, calibration, I can't use it because it says some stuff on it. He's already written on the on the play. So what I have to do is go in here and highlight it and then up here, make a copy. And it's going to be um, same place, week eight, that of being about a boom, and I save it. So now when I go to my library, week eight, I'm going to have, whoop, Eddie got, here you go. Remember I said it alphabetizes eventually. So here's Eddie De Los Reyes. And he, look at squiggle marks, right? Here are the comments. And then here's the copy I just made. No comments. Because I made a copy. That's what Robert was telling us to do. I do it because I have to get rid of the writing that Robert or Eddie De Los Reyes did when he sent it to me. Sometimes they have all kinds of comments. Hey, look at this, Kuv. Look what happened here. And this and this and that. Well, when I'm doing calibration, all I want to do is say, holding, no foul. So I have to make a copy so that there's no writing. Okay. For your cut-ups and your crew, unless you want to get rid of somebody's writing, you don't have to make a copy. Okay. okay? So I'm encouraging you now that you know that there is this management tool not to use it no <laughs> no yeah okay use what huh hey, all right use what you know i was just saying use what i've already forgotten <laughs> donald clay that's why you worked in the white house baby you <laughs> you were buttoned up okay now let's can we does everybody understand that the diff, the two different ways to make cutups one of them go ahead and mark all your um important things that you want look for the squiggles highlight every squiggle save your playlist over where to go 
There it is. Save your playlist right here. And you're good to go. Okay. Um, the other way is to do it one play at a time. You find your first play, you highlight the bubble, you save a playlist, you title it. Now you've got your playlist in there. And now you do it one play at a time. When you find a play you want, you highlight that bubble, you go and you drag it and drop it. Okay, those are the two ways, two main ways. All right, any questions about cut-ups? Because now I'm going to go into editing. Not about cut -ups. Awesome. Now, remember, when you are um, editing uh, and doing drop dropping one play at a time, that's what the thing that kind of bothered me is because um, if I was on <clears throat> working in city plays, and then I created a, a playlist called uh, Westview Plays, and I'm taking plays from City Plays to Westview Plays. They were, I had to scroll back and forth down to go back to City, then find my play, then go back here and scroll down to Westview to drag it and drop it. That was kind of a pain in the butt. If you find yourself having to look for the file so that you can drop it, try the way I told you the first time. Go through it all, mark them all up, and whatever. Remember the special plays. Remember at the end of the game or at halftime that there were certain plays that we wanted to take a look at. Hopefully, your back judge or whoever is um, keeping the foul report, referee says, hey, look, uh, a sweep at uh, 245 in the first quarter. Okay, you can find that. So add those special plays in there. Steven, um, before we go on to the to edit to the editing part of it, mm -hmm. well, we've got this the the foul report done because I think we're all going to do foul reports, and then uh, I'm speaking like all the all the new guys here. Um, how would I just send that foul report now? Okay, I've already got that done, so now, now I'm going to send it okay. to my crew. So now I have a um, what did I have? Dallas Reyes. Okay, so here's my Dallas Reyes uh, foul report. I go right up here, this little blue share. And one way that's cool for you is when you go to share. Okay. When you go to share, this window opens up. And one of the ways it can happen is uh, by crew. So if I had uh, Bezerkov's crew right here, by the being, I do it twice. There's Bezacroft's crew, and I can just share it right to Bezacroft's crew. Or I can go when it, oops, I get rid of it. I let it back. So in order, let's say it's one at a time. So I don't have I don't have crews made up. So Miles Bailey is somebody that I want. So I highlight Miles, ba Miles Bailey. And oh, gotcha. Him. Okay. And then I want... Um, uh let's see if i can find sometimes they're alpha oh don clay there we definitely want don clay okay and then uh i can't find uh ron cox sometimes they're they're screwed up all over you can go up here and look i'm gonna go for ron and there's ron cox that's a search feature uh Thanks. name somebody else ron uh, uh brian brian mills my crew name B-R-I-A-N. I always I always type brain brain. There's Brian Mills, Brian Moore, Brian Switzer, and okay. Brian Wardness. Okay. He's I like Brian Mills. Click the arrow. Now he goes over. Make sense? Yeah. That's great. And you can type a little message here if you want. And make sure the radio button that says include comments is yes. Yeah, right here. Yeah. In addition okay. to the video, your notes will be shared. Yeah. Okay. It's that's on automatically. At least on mine it is. Okay, I'm going to cancel that. All right. Now, if you do want to illustrate, um, there are three basic tools. Um, one is circles, so you can highlight an official or highlight a player. When you use a circle, there are three things. One is you can get rid of the circle. Another way you can move the circle. That's the black one. Or you can go right on the circle and make it move. 
<coughs> and then the, the last one is this arrow and it makes the circle big or small. So I use small for like linemen far away that I want to identify. And then if I want to look at something big up here, I, I want to make it like that. So all different ways to do it. So those are circles. The next one is the text box. And it always says click to edit. So I, you know, I gotta get rid of that. Um, let me move it, get rid of this. Go away. Lots of you really can't make a mistake. I mean, there's there's if you if you screw up, um it actually has spelling features. So if you click on this and double click, it'll give you some ideas of what you might want. So you can spell check. Um, and you can delete. You can completely delete the box. I mean, there's no, there's nothing that you can screw up that can't be fixed by yourself. It's real simple. All right. So now you start, when you start um, typing, it wants to scroll. And one of the things that I've found is that a box like this is not as easy to read as a box like maybe like that. Oops, that's weird. I don't know how that happened. So for this, I don't know what happened. Maybe because I'm doing nonsense. So if I wanted it to be smaller, I can go like this. And um, for some reason it's not letting me, there we go. So that, that would be okay to have somewhere where I wanna draw an arrow. So now I'm gonna draw an arrow by clicking on the squiggle line and I can select line, arrow, or a blocking thing or a squiggle. I use the arrow mostly, and I do it like that. Now, I inadvertently put an orange mark here at the 39-yard line, and I want that to go away. When you hit undo, the last thing you drew is going to go away. So when I hit undo, this arrow is going to go away. When I hit undo again, the little dot's going to go away. Undo does not take away a box. Undo does not take away a circle. Undo just takes away squiggles, lines, dots, all that stuff. You can undo, undo, undo. Again, there's always a way to fix everything you've done. This is a stupid thing to say, so I'm going to delete it. Steve, I have a question from here uh, from Tony. Uh, he's saying it, there's, it comes play sometimes where the Bill, the camera has been running a very long time. There was some discussion or something going on. And there's 30 seconds in front of the play where we really don't need to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can put a, a, we can move that green bar. Um, how do how do we do that to cut out that wasted time at the beginning or the end? Sure. It's called snap detection. And so what you do is you go down here to this little wheel. These are all your settings down here. When you click on the wheel... Um, you can loop the clip so that your video only plays one play over and over and over and over again. That's for coaching. Um, you can you can select play clip one time, and it'll just play the one click clip the one play and stop. Or you can what what we always do is play all clips. So we want the whole game. You can turn on audio to see if there's audio. Sometimes there is audio with it. That's exciting on certain plays, and it's annoying all the rest of the time. So whatever. Do you think audio. it'll be useful with us using the mics more? Um, no. I The only time I tried to do it is when I blew my inadvertent whistle last year. I tried to listen for the whistle. And <laughs> there's a little secret. No, it's not a secret. I got a damn award for it. So, well, you gave yourself up, though, so I, I have to give you props on that. 
<laughs> but again, that was a, if you want to hear a whistle or something like that, you could um, you could do it. We had a whistle right before a field goal. Ben Bockley and I were back under the goalpost, and it was the West Hills was trying it at El Cap, and a fog, a, a truck horn went off as the guy approached the kick, and I'm like, damn! So we had to um, we had to penalize that. So. Okay, so I'm getting to the point. So annotations you want on because that's all the drawing that I've been doing. Um, high, F, high definition quality, you want that on all the time. And then here's snap detection. So snap detection should, as it goes along, start giving us uh, plays uh, closer to the beginning of the snap. Let's see. This one doesn't seem to be doing it, but that's the best way to do it is snap detection. And yes. what it does is it brings that bar out down here at the bottom. And so it'll start wherever um, that play, the snap is about ready to start. Steve, okay. you can but also, Steve, you can also clip arrowhead. on that, that green arrow and move it. Sorry, Bob. Here's the green arrow. Down yeah, here. you can Drag slide that. that over and then, yeah, there you go. Uh, and then now the video will start right where that is. Oh, okay. Well, it's not seeming to work this time. But that is a feature right here. This green arrow, when you do snap detection, that's what's going to be all the way out here wherever the snap is. It'll it'll be. But right now, for some reason, it's not. I don't know. I can't make it work. Probably because I'm doing a tutorial. Yeah, it's not carrying over. But anyway, snap detection and the green arrow. Okay? Thank you. So then the, the last features were the drawing. I already told you about that. So the line is pretty helpful sometimes when you want to, you know, draw a line that shows the, what, in this case, the 41-yard uh, line. It's not real good for 3D, like trying to line up the butt of a center. That doesn't work very well, but it does give you the line uh, on the field. So it's really two dimensional. Um, I told you about the arrow. Sometimes I, I'll use a block. This guy's gonna block that guy. Um, and then of course I can undo it and I can make it a squiggle. And you know, I don't know how to you can do all kinds of drawing, freehand drawing on that and then undo. So that's that. Um, what other features? I think that's about it. I think that's about it. Any other questions? I there think were... I think that gets a really good start for somebody like me who's new at it. Some of our experienced guys had some tip, tips too. Well, the key is the foul report. I, as I said, I say that again, the key is the foul report. And that's why uh, on our crew, who's our back judge, Ben Sheen is going to be the foul report guy. And uh, uh, last year for us, it was Kevin Fuller. And the year before, I think it was Toby Wilson, right? Or I think Toby was our foul guy. Back judge is a pretty useful person to have keeping the foul report. But you also have your own card and your own fouls just to make sure that your fouls are getting reported right. Because sometimes the foul report isn't exactly accurate or it misses a foul or you had more to say about it than the back judge reports. So um, you can you can report your own, record your own, not only your own fouls, but but critical plays you want to look at. Put those down and give them to whoever's doing the cut up. When I say give them to them, hey, the best way to do it is your phone that I found. That's mine. Is so if I see Pedraza on here, if Tim's got, hey, I got three specials I want you, or three plays I want you to, to put in the cut ups, I'll just take my phone out and take a picture of it. Now I got it. We're good. It takes two seconds. It's real easy. That's what Kevin used to do. Kevin would take a picture of the foul report and text it to me. 
So I'm driving home and I go, oh, I got to text, you know, up on my, you know, hands free driving. It says, oh, text, text uh, from Kevin Fuller. And I go, geez, he already sent me the foul report. Stinker. It's great. So once you get the foul report, do your math, kind of find out where they are numerically and, and hunt for them. Once you, you, they're pretty easy to find. You'll get really good at it. it. It's kind of a skill that you don't really strive for in life. But now that we're doing cut-ups, you get pretty good at it. <laughs> it's kind of a weird skill to develop, but you'll I'm get looking forward to it. <laughs> I think you're kind of hitting it as kind of a skill that you develop, but I noticed like when you break down film, say it was my cruise film, and it wasn't even a foul, or it wasn't even something that really <laughs> caught our eye during the game, but it ends up on, you know, the Coover Weekly. Is that just the time and time you've been on Huddle? It just kind of snaps out at you and you notice something about it? I learned that from Walt Anderson. Walt Anderson taught me that you can watch film at, well, he can do it at like I think he's up to three times normal speed. I can do two. I can do two times the normal speed. And then all of a sudden I'll go, oh, something happened. And sure enough, you go back and there'll be some goofy thing that caught your eye. You can watch a lot of fast film because you watch a lot. But um, for our film, yeah, same thing happens with our film. I'll be watching our film every week. And I'll be going fast forward, just, you know, yeah, yeah good, good, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, whoops. And then, um, you know, and then I think Bezerkov, I didn't mean to uh, slide his comment at all. His comment about uh, everybody participating, that's really what we're trying to get at. And so um, I, I found, well, right away when I was with Art Warren and, and, and Matt Starr, it's like, it, it wasn't going to help our crew to have Coover writing a bunch of crap all over our cut-ups. Um, that would just be, it just was, it was going to not work ever, ever, ever. So that's when I started just saying art, false start, uh, Robin holding or Matt um, uh, potential grounding. Um, and, uh, and then every once in a while, a spot will show up, by the way, maybe about once or twice a game. Um, maybe like a, a loss, you know, a quarterback sack or uh, a, a long play kind of double action. And you can see it's like, whoa, I think we missed that spot. That's a good one to put into your playlist. You know, let's check this spot, question mark. That's all you got to say. Let's check this spot. And then the two flanks can talk about it. And everybody can chime in, but, um, you know, that was always Don and I and David Collins and I used to do that just a few plays a game just keeps you keeps you going that and was get, really really helpful for me at the beginning of the season getting yeah. get it, getting the art of getting it reading your feet and getting the right angle to do it it that was a really useful tool yeah so anyway uh, there's a lot of uh a, a lot of meat on this just a ton of meat and what I try to keep it to is about 20 plays. So we make an agreement that if we don't have a meeting on Wednesday night, we do Zoom Wednesday night. Okay. So that's half the time. The other half of the time, we have to find a Tuesday, preferably, where we can do a Zoom for one hour, max, no more than one hour. And um, the first 30 minutes are those about 20 plays from the cut up list. So there'll be the, all the fouls and then all the specials things, you know, so that's about 30 minutes. The next 15 minutes, we would do some scouting. Um, I think, did we do the scouting before the goals or the goals before the scouting? I think we did the goals before the scouting maybe. So based on what we did on the film and our debrief, our own personal debrief and our crew debrief, each one of us then came up with a goal for the at least one goal for the next week. Usually it's two. Usually it's two. But um, and we would share. So mine might be um, uh, more accurate spots or clock awareness or goal line mechanics or you name it. You know, reporting fouls to the referee in the right, slowing down my foul reporting, 
or talking on the microphone. I mean, the radio. Sometimes, you know, we had one guy last year he's from Texas. It was David Collins. And God, first he's got a draw, and then he speaks about 100 miles an hour. You can't understand him. So we had to get him. Remember, we had to get him to slow down and talk slowly so we could all understand. And that was a goal for the week. It's like, let's all understand each other on the radio. Um, there's all kinds of goals you can come up with. So we did 15 minutes of goals. And then at the end of 15 minutes, the last 15 minutes, I would put together some plays just doing the same thing. I would scout um, a basic defense, basic offense, basic sets, um, yeah, about 10 plays for uh, five from each team, offense, defense, um, what kind of coverage do they have? What were their formations like? Um, uh, their base package, every team has a base base package, you know, so they're going to go, you know, two by two, or they're going to go two back, or they're going to, you know, they're going to run their basic plat big play is the, um, run run zone offense so um whatever it is you kind of want to feature that look at their formations how well coached they are look at their defensive front so the umpire knows where where to slide and move and get comfortable and then what kind of coverage is behind that are they sending and going cover zero well if that's then 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 we know we have a lot of man-on-man -man coverage coverage rather than zone coverage um and, you know, at the high school level, it's pretty basic. You know, when you get up to the college and the NFL level, they mix the coverages. They'll go, they'll go two over the top, and then they'll man underneath, and they'll, you know, mix and match it all up. But for us, they're usually going to be in zone, or they're going to be in man, basically. You know, if they go two, two safeties, then they're in the cover two, and they're in a zone, and there's not going to be a lot of pressing. So you can be prepared for that. So it helps. A little bit of scouting, and then you're done. Okay, so it's seven oh seven. We did an hour and seven minutes. And um, Tim, do you have anything to add? As long as you're on, I appreciate you supporting us and what we're doing here. No, I'm just wanting to learn, and I think it's great. And like you've, you're, we're, we're teaching, and things that we're doing about, you know, the answers in the video. Mm -hmm. Not the the answer isn't in who's who's got more experience or who's mm -hmm. anything it's the answers in the video. So the more video we can watch, we can see, okay, that here's the right answer. Now how do we get there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what you, that's what we're doing. So I think it's great. Yeah. Steve, I wanted to add that uh, Robert noted that he can also answer questions during the season for us on huddle. Uh, and we can just reach out to him. Uh, so we're not always flooding you with everything. Yeah, and, and and again, there's there's a, a lot of people out there that have uh, the expertise. So certainly, Robert, um, uh, I just shared his foul reports or our foul reports uh, up with the Sac Joaquin section in Sacramento um, on how we use are beginning to use the foul tracking, and uh, and then uh, wireless microphones, and we really are the trendsetters. And I'm not being boastful. I'm just saying, well, I sat with Pete Morelli Saturday morning all day, and he said, hi, Tim. Um, and he even said, he goes, San Diego, you guys really have it going down there. Now, I don't know how Pete Morelli knows that, but that's it. Because I was on his crew and Garrett's <laughs> from that area, Garrett Hayslip. So, <laughs> so Garrett knows him well, and we, we brag. Come on. <laughs> well, it's spreading your guys' reputation really, really well. And by the way, Katie Ott's on this tonight. And Katie, as a first-year official, followed us around last year. Um, and then uh, because she did, she would be on our Zoom meetings with us uh, midweek and uh, see us evaluate. And then she ended up with two varsity games, one of them for like a league championship, by the way, as a first-year official. And um, and so she right away was diving into film and being a player, she knows the value of it. Um, but when we have our first year officials doing that already, um, uh, you know, we're just 
everybody hold on because the first year groups are going to start rising up and 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 passing us all. <laughs> I'll be the first one to get passed. So anyway, thanks for joining us. I, I'm going to end the recording and send it to Dave Garza because he's obviously going to want to put this on our on our website so people can reference it. All right. Thanks, Steve. Great job. Thank you all. Good luck to you. Call anytime with any questions. Call Robert. Call any of the crew chiefs. Call your fellow officials.